What's up LEGO fans, it's LEGO Man Cam, and in this video, I'm gonna be testing out one-star LEGO reviews on a range of different LEGO sets, and answering the question of why exactly these sets are so bad. So join me for the ride, and let's jump into our first set called In Arishim's Shadow. This set is based off the Eternals MCU film from 2021, and features 493 pieces, four minifigures for 60 US dollars, or 120 Australian. Let's start with this one-star review from user Whiplash, whose review is titled Soulless Set. The quality of this set is great. The way it fits into the themes of Marvel sets is good, but the price, oh, I can't get over this being $60. This whole set feels like a leftover Bionicle scrap. I think a smaller character and the inclusion of a diorama or vehicle would have made a better set. Very disappointed. The next review by user Forced is titled Unmatched in its terribleness. This is the worst LEGO mech set by far. LEGO mostly produces badly designed mechs with totally empty backs that only look good enough from the front and in the best cases from the side. LEGO should be ashamed of confirming a design like this. Moreover, it's not even suitable for playing as various parts tend to come off. I think the last review from eBuilds is my favorite though, which just says, um, what are those feet? So let's actually take a look at this set and see if it's that bad. Firstly, the biggest complaint was the price was too high, which I think is definitely true. $60 in the US isn't too terrible, but when you look at it in other countries like Australia, where it's $120, the price is absolutely insane. Something that is $60 in the US should be 90 in Australia, so this set is an extra $30 overpriced for literally no reason. On the actual set itself, the build is super flimsy. As eBuild said, the feet are so wobbly, it essentially just sits on some Technic frames with two big opalescent dish pieces, which are supposed to keep it up, but they just move upwards all the time and make the set fall over. In my personal collection, I've got this set leaning up against the corner of a shelf so that it can rest on the walls. Other than the stability and price, it is kind of a nice looking set though. The dark red color scheme is pretty unique, as long as the pieces don't snap like the old dark red did. I love the technique that they use to get the eyes for the head, as well as the massive light brick in the center of the figure. The minifigure selection is also really nice here. You get an exclusive Kingo and Ajax, who look really cool. And let's be honest, Kingo was probably the best part of this movie. So overall, I'm gonna say this set doesn't deserve to be one out of five stars, maybe two or three. Next up we have a LEGO Star Wars set which few have been able to justify picking up and that is the Justifier from The Bad Batch. Also just quickly if you are enjoying this video please feel free to like and subscribe we're a really small channel and any little bit of support really helps. This is Cad Bane's signature ship that he flies throughout the Bad Batch series and this gave us our first Cad Bane minifigure appearance in 9 years. The set also included Omega, Hunter and Fennec Shand as well as Toto 360. It came with 1,022 pieces but retailed for an astounding 170 US dollars. For comparison, the Inquisitor Transport Scythe from the same year came with just 80 less pieces but only retailed for hundred dollars. Try and work that one out. Anyway, let's get into these one star reviews. Cooler Cascade 55 said, Outrageous price, waste of money, time, and energy. A 5 out of 10 build and a lack of figures make this so overpriced, especially for Australian builders. Sergeant Thrilled Raccoon said, Lego is getting out of hand for their pricing. There is no possible way to justify this. I like what you did there. This makes me want to stop buying Lego full stop. Boy Goss says, this thing compromised the interior for a gimmick that does not even work super well, and there is a gaping hole in the middle of the ship no matter how you display it. The ship just looks unfinished and embarrassing. The figures are superb, but the price on this thing is ridiculous. So is this set actually as bad as the reviews say it is? Personally, I'm going to disagree on a few of these points, and here's why. Firstly, yes, it is really overpriced at $170. You are much better off getting a set like The Ghost or something else at the same price point, and that's why like, I picked mine up at 50% off. But in terms of the actual set itself, regardless of the price, I do kind of like it. I think the figure selection is really good, even though it would have been nicer to get a few more. I think the feature actually works really well with the landing gear attracting as you move the back fin. Uh, and for a big set, I think it is kind of rare to get one of these sets that's just really massive uh, compared to all of the more compact and downsized sets that we've been getting lately. So yeah, I don't think this set is deserving of one star. 
I think the designer did a really good job on it. I think just whichever executive decided to price it at $170 is the one to blame. Now the last one star review we have is for a very recent set that actually only came out a month ago and this is the Lego Star Wars Sith Infiltrator. This set retails for $70, includes 640 pieces with four minifigures and is based off Darth Maul's iconic ship from The Phantom Menace. Lego has made a number of renditions of this set, so why has this 2024 one gotten some one star reviews? Well let's take a look at them. This is what Marsha had to say, had I known this set had some Technic parts, not a fan, in this I would have passed on it. The directions are a nightmare. I gave up because the build was just too frustrating. Also very overpriced. Devoted Star Wars fans will probably love it, but I don't. It's just a waste of money. Honestly, I'm not quite sure what she means here. I think almost every Lego set these days has a decent amount of Technic to it. I actually built this one recently and like it didn't even have that much Technic maybe other than the landing gear. Also someone that calls instruction directions is probably not someone to listen to and price wise, yes, this set is a little pricey. I think 60 would have been better. So I agree with them on that point. There's then two more one star reviews. First by Sir Shrewd Vornan, who says, I haven't even received the set. How can I review something? I haven't received. You think Lego would know that I haven't received the set. Disappointed in Lego. And then Worst Pleasant Cloud says, never got the set, lost in the mail. Unfortunate as this would be incredibly nostalgic from the set from 25 years ago. I'm not quite sure what to say here. They've both given the set a one star out of five, but then also claimed to not actually own the set. I'm just assuming Lego was taking a while to ship it because there was understandably a lot of delays going around in the May the 4th pandemonium. But I just find it so funny seeing these people saying that the set is bad despite not actually having it. And I also love in Worst Pleasant Clouds review, he even ticked the option to say, I would recommend this to a friend, um, despite the fact that they gave it a one star review. Anyway, actually looking at the Sith Infiltrator itself, it's a really nice set in my opinion, but it does have some drawbacks. So let's start with the positives. The ship is really sleek and has a much more intricate and complex build than any of the other previous renditions using so many more pieces. I think the overall size of this one does also make it a lot more in line with the scale of a lot of other LEGO Star Wars sets and doesn't make it feel too oversized like a lot of sets like TIE Fighters do. The ship is fun to swoosh around and the spring loaded shooters and the bomb drop feature work really well. In terms of the negatives though, Darth Maul's eyes do look a little bit creepy without any pupils, but I do understand this is the direction Lego is going in, so as long as they keep it consistent, I don't mind it too much. As well as the large lip in the middle of the ship, looking a little bit wonky and it does stand out quite a bit. He also do get an exclusive Saw Gerrera in the set who's really great to finally get. Overall, this set definitely does not deserve to be given a one star review. I think it definitely deserves at least three or maybe four stars. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. So if you did enjoy, please leave a like and click the subscribe button and let me know in the comments if you wanna see another video like this. See you in the next one.